So um, what I'm going to present is a case study um, of a project that I've just got funding for that I found out on the way here. So the, uh, one of the outcomes of this project is to try and develop a European research agenda. So I was coming here to sort of get some ideas. Then I found out we had the money for the project, so now I actually have to do it. <laughs> so anything you have to say will be, will be very, very helpful. Um, so the project came about um, through a conversation with Hans Hoosman from the Cultural Heritage Agency of the Netherlands. And that was a conversation a couple of years ago um, in a soil micromorphology workshop um, in the Czech Republic, where we both discovered we had really nice um, micromorphology thin sections from castle sites. And it sort of grew from there as I discovered more micromorphologists who had um, thin sections from castle sites. And we sort of added these to the project. And these are mostly come from sort of developer-led excavations, um, but also from research excavations as well. So I sort of have to sell the case for why we need a research agenda <laughs> and the motivation behind it. Um, so what I will have to do is sort of highlight the important roles of castles and cultural heritage um, and do this by sort of showing the sort of scientific value of the buried archaeology at these sites and the importance of geoarchaeology in, in doing this. So I really have not got not much time, so I'm going to flick through <laughs> Um, a lot of this, but just to sort of show why castles are important, because I'm going to have to do this <laughs> quite a lot. Um, they're sort of iconic remains of the conflicts in the Middle Ages um, that have shaped present-day European society. And really the buried archaeology at these sites has been quite overlooked, um, so a lot of the focus has been on the standing remains. So what we'd like to do is sort of make the case for both protecting the buried archaeology and um, promoting its proper scientific investigation. So we've got case studies and micromorphology data from across Europe. Um, so I've got existing data from castles in Estonia, France, Poland, um, Italy, Spain and the Netherlands. Um, this is all come from collaborators. Um, I have, my data relates to Estonia, Poland, um, and Spain. And I'm about to sort of embark on collecting some new samples. I've just been at an excavation at Geneva on the Isle of Isla um, in Scotland, where we'll be hoping to go back and collect some more samples from there. Um, and also some more from Spain and current, um, some more excavations in Latvia, where actually there'll be some um, conservation work taking place, and we'll be able to link the geoarchaeology into those conservation work. So when you sort of do the conservation work at castles, um, maybe moving rubble, for example, and when you do that, you're uncovering the buried archaeology, um, which I hope to show is pretty fantastic. <laughs> so, through and show the sort of coverage that we have. Um, these are just some of the castles that we're looking at and how they relate to the sort of um, cultural climate. So they've been excavated um, through, from different sort of heritage perspectives um, as sort of development and rebuilding projects. So just as an example, um, Chateau de Gienne, um, the excavations took place there um, during the sort of additions for the National Museum of Hunting, um, which is now located on that site. Um, the work at El Blanc in Poland uh, took place um, when a new car park was built, for example. Karpsy Castle in Estonia. Um, this work was carried out as part of a research excavation from the ERC project that I worked on, um, the ecology of crusading. And Castle Seprio and Monte Grotto. Um, these were also done as research excavations by the University of Padua. 
and a current project that I work on, um, Molina de Aragon in Spain. Um, well, this the work here was done as pilot work, but will now sort of focus um, in an H HRC project starting in October. So just to show um, some of the potential, these are the micromorphology thin sections. Um, this is the profile here. You can see these organic bands here, which you can't really decipher um, just by the naked eye. But when you look at them in thin sections under the microscope, you can really see just how different, um, sort of, so this green one here is this one, just the sort of level of detail that you're missing. And this was actually packed full of organic remains, parasite eggs, and stabling waste. Um, and again, a similar situation at Cartsy. Um, fantastic for organic preservation. Um, this is a coprolite, and this has actually got bodily remains embedded within it. And these are samples from Kessel. And again, not a waterlogged context, so a different type of preservation and through rapid burial, which features quite prominently at castle sites, similar to an urban site, I guess. But again, fantastic preservation of organics, but in a different form, microscopically. And similar to castle, we have a similar situation of preservation <coughs> of Chateau de Gênes. Um, what, what the project is also looking at is hiatuses in use, so something that um, is often overlooked as well from the buried archaeology, so changes in use at these sites. What happens when they're abandoned, for example, like squatting activities. This is often overlooked when you're just focusing on the standing remains. So the geoarchaeology really helps us to understand um, the formation processes of the archaeology, the factors that affect the preservation of it, um, and with that we can inform how it should be sort of examined in the future and also how it should be preserved. So just an example from Spain. So we've done sort of two types of excavation at this site. We had um, we did some investigations on a profile that had been left exposed. It hadn't been backfilled. It had just been um, opened up, left exposed. And this had been done to look at um, well, what was called architectural interventions. So just looking at the architecture, really. But the preservation um, in this section was awful. All the plasters, everything all worked away. Levels of, sort of reworking by intubation um, were really, sort of, really bad. However, the materials here um, had been covered by the collapse of the tower, and the ashes looked like they'd been thrown out yesterday. <coughs> so the burial really protected the archaeology. So just to end with some of the, the human threats <laughs> to castles, um, uh, restoration is a threat to the buried archaeology when you're moving uh, things and altering things. Excavation is obviously a threat, which is why you need a proper sort of scientific approach to looking at them. And I've got use of castles as hotels as well. <laughs> so there's been some quite bad examples. Um, I'm not going to name and shame, but where the buried archaeology has just been bulldozed out and spas have been put in. So <laughs> they make nice hotels and people want to stay in them. So, um, so yeah, this is, this is really what we're going to look at and try and develop some sort of yeah, European research agenda. I don't know if we can. We might have to just take it slowly and um, sort of decide how to do it sort of nationally. But any help or suggestions would be great. And thank you. Thank you.